Today I'll be working with this ARC-7 FD. And of course, um, you will always have to drill out the rivets. And since I will not be using the chassis, I'll most likely throw that away, but I'll need this front uh, lip and this rear lip here where the exhaust is at. Okay, now it's time to cut down the posts and take down any high spots like these areas here. And I usually like to grind away as much material as I can around the uh, fender wall here. Front and back if you want. So once all the material has been removed to your liking, uh, you can go ahead and start stripping the paint. Or if this is the paint color and de uh, design that you like, you can leave it as is. So since I will be repainting this, I usually like to just touch up real quick with sandpaper, uh, some fine sandpaper. And what that does is when the stripping gel gets on it, it goes in deeper into the paint and so it will take uh, it will take the paint off quicker okay after the car has been sanded uh, down just a little bit i'll use these uh, paint stripper uh, i bought from home depot it's not the best but i think it will do for now Okay, now that the paint's been stripped off, I can go ahead and uh, lightly sand the surface area here with uh, 800 grit sandpaper. Then after that, I'll be ready to shoot a primer over it. Okay, so I've got the front lip and basically the back portion of the um, under the bumper all cut out. As far as the front windshield and rear windshield, I think I will be using these ones, but I'll wait before I use the uh, side windows. I think they might take up too much space and because the inside of this um, die cast is very, very small and it's very compacted. I think I'll wait. <clears throat> so I'll glue these ones on first. 
put these aside and if I have room I'll put these on later on. Okay, we'll leave it like that for now. And once we actually get the components inside, we can determine if the uh, side windows are needed. This is the full assembly of the cab model. I just wanted to show you guys that these are basically the parts that I will be using. Here are my 3D printed parts. This is the chassis. Uh, these are basically the steering components. This is, I call it the uh, cross member. And here we have the rear motor holder, which is basically super glue and placed on top of the uh, dual shaft motor. Okay, now it's time to open up these pockets here. This pocket is for the on and off switch, and this pocket here on the right is for the charging port and so when I design it I undersized it just a little bit and so now we have to open it up for uh, using the file so what I usually do is I just take a square file like that and just start using and start from a corner and just work your way in you can keep test fitting as you go so you don't accidentally oversize it it's kind of hard to see but the steering knuckles right in the center here will need to be a uh, tap so an a m1 screw can go in and right here at the top needs a uh, we need to open that up so we can have a connecting rod a one mil a one millimeter connecting rod Okay, now it's time to clean up the uh, front steering member. So what needs to be done is these holes need to be opened up. And we need to drill and tap this hole. And this center hole here needs to be drilled so a screw can pass through it. Okay, now it's time to assemble the front steering assembly. And what I usually do is I put the one side of the knuckles in and then put the uh, top portion of the cross member on. Now we can put the other steering knuckle on. These black wheels are the ones I will be using. And what I usually like to do is I'll put the uh, front wheels on and basically do a test fit onto uh, the chassis and the body. What I'll usually do is I'll usually put the assembly right in here just to see if there's any interference or if I need to adjust the width of the wheels but for now I think it's it's pretty good I think what I have to do is just mark where I want this to be at so that it's kind of uh, kind of centered so I'll, I'll keep it like that and I'll just put a mark here on both sides of the uh, shaft here I usually do just a tiny drop so if I ever need to remove the assembly, I could do so without having to destroy too much.
Now it's time to make the connecting rod. I usually use a, a brass rod, um, one millimeter. So what I'll do is I'll just bend one side to a 90 degree. Just like that. Put it in and then mark it. So after installing it, if the wheels are not if the wheels don't look that straight, you could always adjust the uh, connecting rod here. So instead of showing you all the wrong ways of soldering, um, I will leave a wiring diagram here so you can use. Okay, now that everything's basically in place, I do have the lights here. The basically front lights and the back lights or the rear lights here in this case i think um i won't be using them because i my drill bit is actually really dull and so i can't drill through the metal i usually like to drill on bumpers or rear bumpers so then i don't um so my drill bits won't go dull but in this case my drill bits are dull so i won't be using that anymore now um, I'll feed the charging port and the on and off switch into the, the pockets and uh, let's super glue them in place or in this case hot glue them in place and I've come to realize that the charging port and the on and off switch are always being handled so if you don't have a good enough bond between the two then between the chassis and the uh, component then it will come off now the issue is right in between here between this cross uh, bar connecting bar and the rotating servo is I think in the future I might have to relocate the charging port and the on and off switch back to the side here uh, because right here it is actually hitting the um, rotating servo here so I might not have enough room to where when I activate this servo it's going to interfere with the steering so in for future builds these these two components here would need to be moved back here now that we have everything in place we can do a test fit again onto the body and see if all the wheels are aligned and it won't interfere with anything and once that's done we can uh, put in a battery okay so it does look like I have controls including the lights okay now we could put the body on So I have to go kind of slow because this this thing will want to whip around and I won't be able to control it.
so overall i think the build came out pretty good the thing was i almost went with the plastic wheels but i'm glad i put on these rubber ones in the future builds if i can i'll do rubber wheels instead because the you just have so much more traction and it's just so much more smoother with the rubber wheels on When the battery needs to be charged, you can plug one end of this uh, tail into the charging port and the other end into a charging station. That will charge your battery for you without having to take your battery out.